Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be sharing my most recent book haul. All right guys, so it hasn't been that long since I filmed a book haul. However, I think I've done a pretty good job of not buying books too impulsively. I feel like last year, I definitely bought a few too many books and I've been trying to prioritize reading my current physical TBR instead of just like buying new releases. So yeah, either way, I still have a decent amount of books just because of book subscription boxes and then books I've gotten as gifts as well as some books that I have purchased myself. So anyway, I'm very excited to talk about these books with you guys. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram, Goodreads, and Patreon, all linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about these books. All right, guys, so starting off with YA Fantasy, first up we have A Fragile Enchantment. So this is the Fairy Loot Special Edition. I believe this is based off the UK cover. And also the reverse jacket has gorgeous artwork and the naked hardback is stunning. So they really knocked it out of the park with this book. Now I have not read this yet, but I believe it is following a girl who possesses this magical ability that allows her to knit emotions and memories into fabric. However, this magical ability is slowly killing her. Now she ends up jumping at the opportunity to create a wedding dress for this noble. However, when she gets to where the nobles reside, she meets the groom and a gossip columnist starts spreading a rumor that our main character and the groom might be somehow involved with each other. And the story goes from there. So I have really high hope for this book. It kind of gives me like wedding planner vibes with Jennifer Aniston, or not Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Lopez. Um, I used to love that movie when I was younger. So I don't know. I think this should be a really fun read. And once again, the book itself is just gorgeous. And next up, we have The Scarlet Alchemist. This is a, another YA fantasy romance from Fairy Loot. And I will say, once again, Fairy Loot did an amazing job with this special edition. Now, I believe this is set in southern China, and we're following this girl who wants to become a royal alchemist. However, she is from a very impoverished family, and she's slowly trying to work her way up the ranks. So to get by, she has been studying this illegal form of alchemy, which seems like necromancy. She's like able to raise bodies from the dead. And then I believe there are trials she has to go through. And then the prince of this kingdom believes there will be an assassination attempt against him. So he asks her for protection and the story goes from there. So it sounds really good, really fun. And I cannot wait to pick this up. All right, so I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot I own this book and I wanna pick it up ASAP because I just read the plot summary and it's definitely giving like the Mummy 2 type vibes. And it is what a river knows. So apparently we're following this girl who is really upset that her parents are constantly traveling the world and leaving her behind. And then one day she gets word that her parents have mysteriously passed away. So she is determined to figure out what happened and she ends up going to her new guardian's house with nothing but a ring that her father had sent her. And somehow this ring is gonna thrust her into this adventure where she has to uncover the mysteries of what happened to her parents. And it just sounds so good. So I will definitely be reading this in March. I am so excited. And once again, it is a gorgeous fairy loot special edition. I will say this is not my favorite in terms of the outer part, but the hardback is gorgeous and so is the inside dust jacket. And I guess I will show you since I just said that, but look at the hardback. So, so pretty. And then it also has this gorgeous artwork inside. And last up for YA Fantasy, we have The Black Witch by Lori Forrest. So I will say I did not know how junky this book was, but it does sound really, really good. I had no idea what this was when I picked, or no idea what this book was about when I picked it up, but I just looked up Goodreads and we are following this girl whose grandmother was this ultra powerful witch who was able to save all of her people using this crazy magical power. Now our main character is the granddaughter of that witch and she possesses absolutely no magical ability, which is very upsetting because she also resembles her grandmother uh, very greatly. So anyway, our main character ends up going to this magical university where she meets all of these different magical beings and the story kind of goes from there. So I've heard this is very political and all of the negative reviews kind of said that it spent a lot of time going into all of the different races and all of the different types of magical creatures. And honestly, that sounds kind of refreshing. So I might give this a shot pretty soon. I'm thinking March or April, but I'm very excited to pick this up. 
and moving into adult fantasy. So first up, we have The City of Stardust. And I will say, this book is the, my favorite book in this book haul in terms of how it looks. It is giving, like, major Valaris vibes, and I'm, I'm here for it. So I don't know very much about this book. I was doing Patreon reading sprints about a month ago, and someone said they were reading this, and that's pretty much all I know. So I believe this is following a girl that lives in this community where the bravest and brightest are sent on a quest and never seen or heard from again. And they have to go on this quest because of a woman named Penelope who never ages. I know, didn't make a lot of sense to me either. Um, and then our main character's mother ends up being one of these people selected and she isn't able to do whatever she set out to do. So her daughter kind of picks up her mantle in the hopes that she'll be able to stop what is going on. So it sounds pretty good. If you have read this, let me know what you think. It has kind of mixed reviews on Goodreads, but also for an adult fantasy, it's pretty short. So definitely interested and hopefully I will be picking this up soon. All right, so this next book, I'm a little bit nervous about picking up and it is Feybound. So this adult fantasy has been getting a lot of hype recently. However, all of my friends that have read this have had very mixed reviews. And I recently spoke with Isa from Fun Fantasy Books and she was about halfway into this and she was very unsure. So I, I have some reservations. However, I will definitely be reading this in 2024. So I believe this is following um, two sisters. One of them is in the elven military and the other one is a, I think she's like a seer and she can like see into the future. So anyway, they are both part of like the elf clan and then something happens where the one in the military is banished and her sister decides to show loyalty and goes with her and they're like excommunicated from their community. So while they are traveling, trying to find a new place to go, they end up in the Fae courts. Now the Fae have not been seen for millennia, so this is very troubling. And I believe it's these two sisters kind of living in the Fae court. So it sounds really good. Uh, the back actually says, divided by blood, imprisoned by fate, bound by desire. So I'm all about it. So like I said, I will definitely be picking this up in 2024. So we will see. And moving into just straight up fantasy romance, of course, I have to start with Crescent City 3, House of Flame and Shadow. I'm not gonna get into spoilers. I'm not even gonna say very much about this book. Um, it is the third book in the Crescent City series. I will say, I did pre-order the Barnes & Noble special edition, and then on release day, it said it was coming on February 7th. Um, if you guys don't know when release day was, it was January 30th. So I was not waiting a week. So I ended up going to Walmart and I picked up the Walmart special edition. And wow, am I happy I did because my Barnes and Noble one showed up looking like it got run over. It, it was in such poor shape. So I, I'm going, I still haven't, but I'm going to return the Barnes and Noble edition. Um, and honestly, this book fell a little flat for me. So I am gonna give you my rating of the book. Uh, no spoilers besides the rating, but I just wanna give a spoiler warning. So three, two, one. I gave this book 3.75 stars and there will be a live show on February 27th. I'll leave all the information down below. There will be a full spoilery chat where I will go and express all of my feelings. But for this video, just know 3.75. Okay, spoiler over. Anyway, that is my thoughts, and yeah, let me know if you've read this. What did you think? I just, I have so many interesting feelings. If you let me know what you think, please don't post spoilers. Just give me, like, your star rating, and if you liked it or if you didn't like it. But yeah, just, oh well. <laughs> All right, this next book is honestly painful for me to show you guys because I need the audiobook to come out. So, Sarah A. Parker, if you're watching this, I will do anything for you to come out with an audiobook for this because I need to read it. And that is when the moon hatched. I have heard such polarizing different opinions about this book. I had one friend who I trust so, so much tell me that I will adore this book and she enjoyed it as much as A Court of Thorns and Roses, that series, which really piqued my interest because we both love that series. But then I had another really close friend DNF this book. So I don't know where I'm gonna fall, but please, please audiobook gods. I need this book. So anyway, I honestly have no idea what this book is about and I really like to give you guys an idea of the plot. However, I don't wanna ruin this for myself because I am so invested in how I'm gonna feel about this book. So yeah, but anyway, the cover is really pretty. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I really don't have any sort of plot synopsis for you guys, but this also is written by the same author that read To Bleed a Crystal Bloom, which I adored that first book. I'm actually gonna be rereading that first book and then the second and the third book in February just to see how I feel about that series because I feel like it's gonna be a five-star series overall. But anyway, please, 
please, audiobook ads. I need this book in audio format so badly. All right, and this next book, honestly, I feel like I have featured this book in so many recent videos. It's amazing. I haven't actually read it yet, but I just checked and I did not have this book in my most recent book haul. So here it is. A Court So Cruel and Lovely. Honestly, I thought I would have read this book by now. However, my February TBR has just really gotten out of control, and I feel like ever since Crescent City 3, I've just been trying to read books that make me really happy so I don't get into a reading slump. I read Binding, or I'm sorry, Redeeming Sex, followed by Crescent City 3, and since then, I've just been in the weirdest reading mood. But anyway, I'm really hoping to pick this up soon because the plot sounds really good. We're following, well, in this world, when people are born, the gods take away some of their magical ability in order to protect them from the Fae. Now, if there is a human that is born and is able to keep some of this magical ability, they are considered corrupt and are burned to death. So our main character is one of these people, and when it is found out that she is corrupt, she is sent out of her community. Somehow she escapes the whole burning thing. And she ends up running in to a mercenary that had left her for dead some years ago, and they decide to kind of help each other, and the story goes from there. So I know Sam from Sam Reads a Little really enjoyed this book. I know Carrie from Book for Romance really liked this book, and I trust both of them, so I am so excited to pick this book up. And I'm still hoping to have it read by the end of February. And last up, this is more like paranormal slash fantasy romance. We have Twilight of Embers, and this is actually a Choose Dragon Shifter fantasy romance, and it has gained so much hype recently, and I am so excited about that. So this was so kindly sent to me by Tessa Hale. It was probably the most fun PR package I've ever received. Um, I also got this dragon in that package. He's my fave. But anyway... This is following a girl that ends up going to this university and she ends up meeting a bunch of dragon shifters and they are all different types of guys. So you have like the sports jock golden retriever type love interest and then you have like tortured hero type love interest who are always my favorite. Um, and it just sounds really fun. And like I said, every single person I have talked to that has read this book has loved it. And I read Legacy of Shadows last year, and it was one of my favorite Why Choose Paranormal Romances. So I have such high hopes for this book, and it'll definitely be my next read after I finish what I am currently reading. All right, so this next book is also a mix of paranormal and fantasy romance, and it is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Now, I was a little nervous to pick this up only because Allie Hazelwood is kind of hit or miss. So I read all the books in the STEM series. I don't actually think that's the name of the series, but you guys know what I mean. The first book being The Love Hypothesis. And while I did love that first book, the rest of the books kind of fell flat for me. So I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this. However, I did not realize this is Marriage of Convenience between a vampire and an alpha werewolf. So sign me up. I definitely want to get to this sooner rather than later. So if I don't read this in February, which is what I originally planned, on reading uh, it, I will hopefully be reading it in really early March. So this will definitely be read soon, and it sounds really good. All right, so moving into Dark Romance, I only have two books. And first up, we have Gothicana by Rue Nix. And honestly, this kind of toes a line between Dark Romance and then Gothic Fantasy because there are some paranormal and like creepy magical things that happen throughout this book. Also check trigger warnings. I've recommended this book to a few people who then came back to me and said it was a little too dark for them. So I feel like I'm not doing a very good job explaining that. This is dark and it is forbidden and it is student teacher. So kind of know that going in. This is also the second time I filmed this clip because I ended up ranting about sprayed edges. So I'm determined not to do it this time around. But anyway, this is my third version of this book. And I think the cover is stunning. However, the sprayed edges leave a lot to be desired. So I am one of those people that is a big proponent of stenciled edges are great, but when you just have like blocked out sprayed edges, they have a habit of looking not the best. So I really hope we start moving away from that and kind of go back to either nothing or just like stenciled edges because those are pretty and this, this is not, not looking great. But anyway, if you're unfamiliar with the plot of this story, we are following a girl whose mother, I believe, has recently passed away. It's been quite a while since I read this. And she has been struggling with her mental health all the while growing up because she's really been kept in isolation and her mother was not the best mother from what I remember. But anyway, she ends up getting a letter saying that she has been accepted into Venmore University. And when she gets there, she realizes that this university is actually a really creepy, like, gothic 
mansion and the person in charge of the university is our love interest. And then some murders take place and horrible things happen. We have to solve a mystery and it's just so good. And the forbidden student teacher vibes are perfection. I just, I loved this book so much. I definitely want to do a reread very, very soon. The only issue is this gives me such like autumnal vibes that I really want to wait for the fall to do a reread. But anyway, I love this book. And if you have not picked it up yet and you like Dark Student Teacher, definitely check it out. And the second dark romance, unfortunately, has not been delivered yet. So it is getting delivered between four and eight. And I am a very impatient person and I wanted to get this video filmed and done. So it is Serpentine Valentine and I will have a physical copy by the end of the day. Um, and this is the newest release by Gianna Darling. She is one of my favorite romance authors. If you have not read anything by her, please read her. She is just so, so good. The Fallen Men series is actually the book series that got me into romance. I mean, specifically MC romance, but just kind of romance in general, because prior to that, I was really only reading fantasy romance. But anyway, Serpentine Valentine is a sapphic, a dark academia romance. I believe we're following a girl that something happened and she's trying to get revenge on this headmaster by dating the headmaster's daughter. And then I believe they end up falling in love. But it sounds really good. Now, I've read Tris Sex Venom, and that book did not work for me. So I was a little nervous about picking this book up just because it does seem to have a similar type trope going on in terms of bully romance. But I've heard Serpentine Valentine isn't quite as bully heavy, and that is what I just did not like about Tris Sex Venom. Um, bully romances are really not my thing. So I'm hoping to absolutely love this book. I'm currently reading it. It's still way too early to tell, but I love Gianna um, Darling's writing. So I'm sure it's gonna be a four or five star read. So anyway, I will definitely be talking about that in my February wrap up. And last up is actually a thriller. So it is First Lie Wins. This is the Reese's book club pick. And I ended up giving this 3.75 stars didn't really work for me, but I am going to be reading more thrillers in the future. So this is following a girl who, right off the bat, we know she is a liar. She has a perfectly, like, idealistic life. She's married to one of the most, like, handsome guys in this friend group. Um, she lives in a mansion. She kind of wants for nothing. But we know her entire persona is a lie. And throughout this book, we kind of figure out what led her there and what her endgame is. And I was enjoying this book up until the last like end of the book where it was a lot of reveals like reveal 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 and it was just it was a little too much so at first i was really like excited about this book because i typically guess the endings of thrillers because i've read so many and i had no idea where this book was going but i think it's because there were so many loopholes um yeah, anyway, didn't work for me, but like I said, I am gonna try to branch out and read at least one thriller or historical fiction a month because I did love those genres before starting a booktube channel when I fell down like a fantasy romance and romance rabbit hole. And yeah, so if there are any really good historical fictions or thrillers that you would like to recommend, leave them down in the comments below. And hopefully in the next one I read, I will enjoy just a little bit more. All right, guys, that is it for my book haul. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've read any of the books I mentioned, please let me know down in the comments below what you thought about the books. And I would like to say a huge thank you to my paladin protectors, Amanda, Erin, and Leslie. Thank you guys so much for your support. And I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.